Hello and welcome to my Korg Prophecy video. This will be a part one of a new video series on the Korg Prophecy. I'd like to explain that I'm not a professional and this is unscripted. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Also, this first part will be pretty long, I suppose. And... Um, Okay, so just so you know that off the bat, so if you're, if you just want to hear a couple presets, there's videos out there that will show you that. Although this first video is going to be about presets. Um, so I'm in a relaxed uh, environment in my front room studio, and um, it's not soundproofed, so you may hear motorcycles in the background because we're in the land of liberty and outside that window are people in Aberdeen in Ibn Ibn Eber. they love their liberty and their motorcycles especially their Harley Davidson motorcycle type motorcycles see my hand it's expressing things cuz you can't see my face so my hand will be doing this kind of hand modeling doing the whole thing okay so my setup basically is I'm using Reaper on a uh, basically this this system ha is pretty much lag free so I've disabled certain things to make that happen and you know so this isn't on you know these Yamahas aren't on the subwoofer is not on so I'm in e I'm in headphones I'm in headphones okay and then over here we have my handy dandy Alienware which has the prophecy manual on it the parameter guide uh, which you know you got to have that uh, even for reference you know is it is it 13 LFOs and what are their shapes you know that's what that's for because I, I can think I can remember but also what are the different setups so that's basically the setup here um, I'm recording with the internal effects the onboard effects uh, the only uh, exception to that is the uh, is I'm using a uh, a compressor limiter on the final out uh, just to kind of create a better mix, I guess. I hope it's a good mix, and I hope it's not too compressed. I'm using a microphone that's really annoyingly close to my face, and it gives me a little room to move down here, so I'll try not to bump into it. And uh, here it is, the Korg Prophecy. Oh, and there's water there. That's not vodka. But if it were, it would be Grey Goose. Grey Goose vodka. But I don't drink Grey Goose vodka anymore. No way. Okay. Enough about me. Let's talk about you. Or you. Or you. Where's the camera? You. This is sideways. Okay. The water glass... The water would be spilling upward. Weird. And the, the speakers are dirt. You know, so perspective. It could be head on. But then I thought, well, I like to have a better view. And since we're not getting into this little menu with the submenu stuff, um, in this video, I thought, well, I'll just make it widescreen and have a better view. Sort of like a, uh, I don't know, one of the Dutch masters. You know, you know one of the... Uh, Dutch masters might have painted this. This is not a New Age symbol. This is my favorite seashell. Okay? I'm not part of the New Age movement. All right. So again, enough about me. Let's talk about the Korg prophecy. And I'm going to stop saying let's because you're not here with me. I'm just going to say I'm going to talk about the Korg prophecy. I always make that mistake. If people say that to you, Hey, let's talk about this. You say, what, you got an elf in your pocket? You know, that's the joke. Anyway, and it works. They're like, oh. So we just heard a bit of prophetic steps. Uh, when people buy the core prophecy, uh, the first patch they usually hear is prophetic steps. Um, it depends on if you have the prophecy board in a Korg Trinity, let's say. Because uh, there was the prophecy board in the Korg Trinity. But prophetic steps, again, you know, it's real nice.
and, and there's obviously a lot of things you can do with that. You can time it to music. You know, you can MIDI clock uh, to songs so it's in tempo. It's a very cool sound. Very complex synthesizer. Not many people realize how deep the prophecy really is. It's, it's actually w- one of my favorite synths because it is so deep. And um, it has many different configurations, and of course it can do physical modeling. And so, but for this video, I think I'm going to limit it to my favorite patches and just kind of talking about the prophecy and what it's all about. Okay, so first of all, uh, I made a another video that kind of gets into things. It's a three oscillator synth monophonic of course unfortunately um, and I had a Z1 it's not the same thing people can say that all day long it is not the same synthesizer you know it's not a thing where I'm a Niedermeyer and I'm measuring you know harmonic content and doing a spectral analysis even though I've done that but it is definitely not the same thing and um You can debate about that all you want. But anyway, so the first thing people do, whether they have the prophecy board in the the Trinity or the actual prophecy here, which is in pretty good condition. I mean, it's not, it's pristine, I guess. It's not, I would not call it like new, Um, but it's in good condition. So you'll see my hand move over here for mouse, mousing. Not often. Okay, Prophetic Steps. It's a great sound, and uh, I've actually used it in a couple of songs that I've made, just little poppy, I don't know what they call them, electro pop or synth pop. 80s influenced them. I'm a bit older, so I like uh, some of that stuff. But you can use it. It's it's, It's a viable instrument to use in all sorts of settings. Um, And so my favorite uh, patches that I've collected over the years have happened to be uh, the factory patches or patches that have been written for Korg for the Prophecy. So whoever did it did a really good job because there's been other people who have written patches that are available online. I have huge collections of those and none of them really come close to what the Prophecy can do. I mean, yes, you can duplicate um, you know, an ARP Odyssey kind of, you know, you can get there and you can duplicate a Moog and, and things like that. But what it's really meant for, I think, is where it really shines is, um, is utilizing its, uh, three oscillators and, and it's many LFOs and it's many envelopes, pitch envelopes and filter envelopes, it's filter configuration, series filtering, parallel filtering, all of that kind of stuff cross-modulation, uh, sync, and ring, and all of those type of things. And using that to make motion um, patches, it also has a really good low end. So you can make some cool uh, bass out of this. I mean, it's, it's got a very deep low end. It's, it's very effective at that. So uh, I don't think I haven't covered anything. Is that predictive text um i'm using a scarlet a focus right scarlet under here somewhere and it's basically just going in dry and uh like i said the onboard effects so let's go through my favorite patches or i'll go through my favorite patches anna fuzz okay this one's cool
Okay, I'm not Keith Emerson, but there's some uh, things there that uh, you can see that it's capable of. Anafuzz is cool. And Anafuzz is one of these um, um, analog, uh, virtual analog style patches. It's not the physical modeling. I don't have many physically physical modeling patches here that I'm going to show you, but Anafuzz is an example. Now, these knobs here can be set to control um, five different things, right? Like, for instance here, there's a chorus level, um, filter one, frequency, um, envelope generator one, decay time, envelope generator one, release time, um, sustain level on envelope gen generator one. And then, of course, these can be um, do four different things. There's, there can be these five, then you press this button over here, and then now it's another five that control five more things, and then another five things, and then another five things. Or you can have them all on at once so that they can mix those things, or two on at once, or whatever. So that would be more for a programming kind of uh, tutorial video. So Anifuzz, just hear that again uh, real quick. Um, you select patches by either running through them up here in value, plus or minus, or you can hit B or A. So I'll just hit B, O, 1, and it's to Anifuzz. There's 64 um, patches in each bank. There's an A and a B bank. So I'm in B right now because that's where my favorites are from on this particular set that I've loaded in for this video. Okay, so Anifuzz. All right, you can hear the arpeggiator too. Let's just check out the arpeggiator. Uh, turn it on. Uh, let's choose two octaves. I'll just keep whatever pattern. Put on a latch. See what this does. Okay, so that was Anifuzz. And then uh, here's uh, another one that I like. Um, I know I do. Organ bass. I really like organ bass um, because I, I think it's an awesome bass. can add in some kind of rotary, hence organ bass, like an organ. And I like organ bass because it's, it's got that very low end, it's, it's really nice. And speaking of the Z1, you can get close to the organ bass, but you're never going to get the bottom end. Now, uh, I did, I think I mentioned, yeah, the there is a compressor limiter, but it's still, it's just not there in the Z1. Sorry. 
not this beating on the Z1. I think it's a great synth, but I got rid of it, you know, because I settled on my favorite synths and I didn't use it that much, you know. So I have a. You can you hear that? That's what I'm talking about. Liberty, man. Woohoo! We're free and we're rocking hard, riding free. All day, all night. <laughs> okay. So, there's organ bass. And we can see how we can change that. Let's just do that a little bit. There's some frequency to uh, resonance. See which ones we're on here. So I'm doing individual uh, setups for these um, performance editors, PEs, right? Performance editors, uh, PEs. I think that's what they're called. So anyway. These little editors here. In other words, the knobs. Oscillator 2, semitone. Try another performance editor just for fun. Uh, filter two resonance. Okay, oscillator two semitone. I'm switching performance editors, so these five become another five. Uh, over here with PE1, PE2, PE3, PE4, and I'm selecting back and forth between them, seeing what they say, because I don't remember every one of these patches. See what PE3 says. They're off. They shouldn't be off, because there's plenty more to control in these things, but yeah, I guess there's enough to work with. Sorry about that. Okay, organ bass. And then Dune Rise. Here, I like Dune Rise. Okay, so aftertouch is set to obviously do something with the filter. just guessing that that is a square wave or a saw wave um, messing around with the filter. Okay, so over here is the log. Again, it's we call it the log. People in the Korg prophecy world call it the log. I think Korg even calls it the log, so I don't know who came up with that. But anyway, uh, it goes up and down, and it has a ribbon controller. And these can be all set to control. And here's the mod wheel and the pitch wheel and all that stuff with the arpeggio. Portamento. You can hold the wheel. So if you go and you 
want it to stay in that position, you can just press hold, wheel three hold and it'll stay. And you can still use the ribbon controller. When it goes in this direction, it's doing something. And that's very nice, I think. check out a couple of patches here um, I mean a couple of uh, setups for the uh, program editors uh, let's see uh, how about oscillator 2 sem semitone filter 1 resonance generator attack time envelope one decay time The Venga Boys. I can't get the Venga Boys. So I got my mind. So let's see. Um, I don't like the Venga Boys. It's not that I don't like them. I have never met them, but I just don't like them. Because I can't get that song out of my head. Maybe. So there's potential for real-time control with this. I mean, real nice. The only problem is these knobs, you have to turn to their preset position before they will activate. So if oscillator 2, semitone, is all the way set down to, you know, down to its lowest position here. You have to catch that, and then you can adjust it. You have to do that with each of these knobs. Once they're activated, though, you can do that freely, but then when you switch between them, I think they set back. I, you know. Anyway, let's check out Performance Editor 2. Filter 2 frequency, I mean resonance. Delay balance, I like the d delay balance. There's chorus feedback. Really didn't sound like it did much there, did it? Filter one frequency. Okay. 
Okay, just a second. Bear with me here. I'm having fun. So here's three. Filter one frequency. Anything in four. Nothing is programmed for the five knobs on four. Again, there's plenty to set these for. I mean, uh, there's so much inside here that they should be programmed. All 20, you know, knobs, basically, can be programmed to do something and should be. Because if you're into live performance and stuff like that, and these should be all set to something that you like and so you can make full use of it. One of the drawbacks, obviously the, the biggest drawback with the Korg Prophecy is being so deep and yet only providing this little screen with those submenus to do your editing on is very tedious unless you have a Prophecy Editor. I do have a Prophecy Editor, but... You know, uh, even with that, uh, I would like real-time control. I mean, it's good for programming and stuff, but I, will, I like to turn up. So there are BCR-2000s out there, the Behringer units, the Behringer BCR-2000s. They have a bunch of knobs on them. And they'll plug in here, and this receives uh, system-exclusive data, MIDI data, system-exclusive SISIX, and it responds to several of its parameters, many of its parameters, not all, uh, unfortunately, because if it were if it were all, then you could hook up two BCRs uh, for this thing. I mean, I don't even know if that would cover it, actually. If every parameter could be controlled with a knob, uh, you might need three, and I don't think you can daisy chain three BCRs, but uh, no, I think maybe you can. I know I have two daisy chained for my Rhodes Chroma, um, and that controls a lot of functions. You know, that's like, uh, I don't know how many knobs. It's like 120 knobs and switches. So, But there's more parameters in here than 120. And so you can see the drawback, and then they give you these five that you got to switch between to get to the next five, and the next five, and the next five. And then you got this and this. But it has fabulous sounds, so really it's a trade-off. And um, so let's go to a next patch, and we've covered a lot of things there. Analog pod. <laughs> Okay, let's turn on the arpeggiator for this one. Where is my... Oh, I didn't turn it on. <laughs> So let's see what we can do with this one. As it runs a little bit, we'll turn the volume down here and just check out what we can do with it uh, with the same performance editors. Thank you. 
Okay, so I just changed uh, an RP uh, a pattern, an arpeggiation pattern, arpeggiator pattern, whatever you want to call it. I just changed the pattern. Okay, so here's some other patterns. Check them out. What was that? There's a pop. Okay, there's analog pod. Um, I guess there's not much to, I mean, there's a lot more to show about, it, obviously. Uh, let's check out uh, attack time and decay and release. Unfortunately, oh, here we go. Now, these knobs can be set to control the amount of resonance. I'm trying to crank up the resonance on this one, but it's set to limit it at a certain point. And by the way, that BCR template you have to load in for it to communicate with the prophecy i have it somewhere and i cannot find it i made one for the prophecy and i simply cannot find it i save everything on disk and so it's on a, it's in my disk library but i will find it and if i can't i'll make one for it so if anybody has a bcr out there um you know i'll try to make one for it again i know how i did it but it was a while ago so analog pod now we should now we've gotten a lot of things explained out of the way i mean uh the mod wheel and the the log and portamento we didn't really talk about so that would be in uh common i think you go in here to program with these little sub menu things so i'll just see common see if we got that there um, how do you page through there? Just going to page through. Common. Hold single above threshold equal template C. Okay, it's not in common. It wouldn't be in global, right? But people who know about this are saying, no, man, it's in. I can't hear you understand that I cannot hear you right now. Portamento. Wheel 3 hold portamento. Oops. No, I don't know what I did there. 
messed up something. Uh, Omni, enable, exmit, interpol. <laughs> Where the heck is portamento time? I don't remember. It don't matter. I'll just figure it out some other day. Global, common. It should have been in common. Maybe it's an oscillator? Just check oscillator here. It could be in here. Oh. Um, fingered time, fingered mode, portamento. Here we go. Yeah, Portamento is in Oscillator. <laughs> And I guess this is how slow it can go. Let's see. Okay, so there, there we go, analog pod. So, uh, right, keep saying so and um and all right. Let's try to rein that in. So, I'm going to go to the next favorite patch and not trouble you with explaining everything. Over. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Circular Reason. It's great. <laughs> Okay, that's a great sound. Circular Reason 12. It's one of my favorites. And then it has, there's another motorcycle. Uh, let's see if there's an arpeggio. Well, it wouldn't really matter if there was an arpeggio for this one at this point. I think that's an awesome little solo. All right, the other thing that I haven't mentioned is uh, I'll just go through and um, ad hoc ad lib um, is the volume. Um, the Prophecy has a very low output. It depends on your settings and if you're using the, in the onboard effects, internal effects. Uh, but really, it does have a, a low output. So I have it cranked up on the input. And so occasionally there might be some rattling going on. I don't know. Let's go to another patch. I love Circular Reason. That's great. This is called Like Mini. Obviously, it's going to be a Like a Mini Moog. Moog. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Sorry, so sloppy. Got a microphone right here. Once again, you can hold these at any point, so... So I'll hold it there at around 75% down, 25% down. Okay, so there's like many. I really like that one. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here's uh, the next one. Uh, you can do, obviously, the performance editing thing. See what that sounds like. Rib bone lead. Rib bone. Rib bone. Why would that be called rib bone? You know, obviously, it's a, it's a reference, like in the 90s during the... the uh, virtual analog craze uh people were well they've been doing this all along naming the patches you know something that refers to something in synthesizer or lore and you know maybe somebody's lead like herb's lead you know who's herb is it herbie hancock we don't know it could be herbie hancock but people in the know know if it's herbie Han this one's rib bone lead this is really nice because it sounds kind of really tweezy. I don't know how to, you know. <laughs> Okay, so you can see the aftertouch. Once again, I don't know what uh, what this is set to, if it's set to VPM or... Um, what type of cross modulation it has, um, but uh, it's a it's a cool sound. Of course, there's a way to find out all of that, but. Uh, 
let's just check out um, maybe a little bit of performance editors. I hope I'm getting that name right because I've said it too many times. Okay, uh, filter one resonance. Oh, everybody wants to hear resonance. It's not cranking the resonance, but. Envelope one attack time. Let's just go to filter. And we will, it's in parallel filter mode. Uh, filter one and filter two. Um, filter one, I'm just going to enter that. And it's a low pass filter. And I can just kind of page through here. Sorry, uh, page. Filter frequency, resonance. Let's crank that up to 99. Okay, and then we just go to filter frequency. So it's got a lot of uh, potential here. Let's turn down that uh, resonance a little bit. You know, it's fun. It's a fun resonance. Okay. Where's my decay? There it is. Okay, a little bit more checking it out. Filter 2 resonance, EG1. Oscillator 2, fine tune. Uh, portamento time, chorus feedback. Uh, let's hear the chorus in the prophecy. <laughs> It's not giving you fe huge feedback, so you can go in to change that. I guess they just want a nuanced kind of chorus depth. Let's check out chorus depth. Again, I hear it, but... Okay, let's see where we came from. Okay, that's too much fun. All right, let's go to another one. This is called Sunrise Sync Lead. It's a nice, awesome sound, reminiscent of a sunrise, I guess. I don't know.
can hear the sinking as I mess with the log. Okay, filter one frequency. Let's check that out. It's always fun. It's got some distortion in it, so let's mess with the distortion. Actually, the distortion on the uh, Prophecy is really cool. And unfortunately, all the performance editors are off except for one set. That's kind of a shame. Time for me to go in and do those someday. Later, two semitone. Let's just check that out. It's a cool sinking sub oscillator semitone. Bring that all the way down. Okay, so if you wanted to do any further editing, you would have to go in and play around with things. Once you once you get used to it, it's not so difficult. You just press the button to get into edit mode. Second button over, and now you can go to oscillator. You just got to remember how to page through it, and that's what the user guide, uh, the parameter guide, is good for. And um, so anyway, well, here, let's mess with the portamento. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to see what this is set to, actually. Um, let's see, it's a, a VPM variable, <laughs> variable pulse modulation, oscillator plus mod, oscillator. Okay, so it's a VPM. And you can change that just in the, on the fly if you want to. Um, how do you do it? Oh, here we go. Here, I'll just change it. I'm going to change it to comb filter. I'm going to press enter, see what that sounds like. Okay, here's, here's standard oscillator and oscillator. Still sounds pretty good. Uh, the filter is set to, let's see what it's set to. It is set to, I don't remember. Filter type, um, let's exit out of that. Uh, it's serial filtering. <laughs> And to understand what that means, you have to get into programming. Okay, but you can change these things on the fly. Like, 
Uh, there's different uh, setups. There's standard Oslayer. Then we heard VPM. That we heard Comb. Comb is like this. Let's hear it again. Okay, then you can hear um, oscillator plus VPM oscillator. Let's hear that. Let's get out of here for a second and change distortion balance. Okay. Then set four. Set four. Standard, standard oscillator plus mod oscillator. Set five, comb filter plus comb filter oscillator. Okay, this is all the internal effects. There's no, just like I said, there's a compressor limiter. Set six, comb filter, and oscillator plus VPM oscillator. Let's see what that sounds like. Now, obviously, these these are making subtle changes because they're it's set to exactly what it's set to. All the filter frequencies are the same. Uh, the routing of the filters are the same, so there's not going to be a, you know, there might be occasionally some pretty huge changes. Okay, let's see, set seven, comb filter plus oscillator mod. That's fun. Okay, and then uh, here's set eight, VPM oscillator plus VPM oscillator. Enter that. Did I say comb filter oscillator plus mod oscillator? Okay, let's set eight VPM oscillator plus VPM oscillator. Um, yeah. Okay, and I think this is the last one before physical modeling. So it's 10 sets. Let me see if I got that right. No, eight sets. All right, so one through nine. Nine sets, right? What am I, what can't I count? What? And then there's the physical modeling, brass oscillator. want to set that up of course 11 read well you can hear that read kicking in late because I think I have the attack time
Okay, that's uh, the brass reed. Sorry. Let's see what's on 12. Pluck. Pluck it. So that's pretty cool. I'm just um, holding down the log and pressing against the ribbon controller. I'm sweeping across the ribbon controller. I'm, let, I'm slowly raising the log. And then what's cool, of course, is you can um, remember that setting, find out what the log is. Oh, shut up for a second. You can find out what this is doing to create that. And then program it to do that and save it as a patch. Once you've messed around with this stuff, of course, you can just dump it into another place on the prophecy and there you go all right so we're gonna exit this there we go that was sunrise sync lead and just to see where we came from okay so our next patch auto random wheel whl i hope that means wheel i don't know what else it would mean whl is that a television station in chicago That's come got some low tones, I think. I know I'm not playing that perfectly, but anyway, auto random wheel is cool. 
Let's see what it does on an arpeggiation. Okay, enough spent on random wheel, auto random. Next one, trance arpeg. Trance arpeg, I really like this one. Let's see what they have the arpeggio, <laughs> arpeggio set to. Okay, and you can do a lot of stuff with them. 